This video will show you how to properly set up your Selenium tests to run them in parallel. You're watching Automate Now and I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. If you run your Selenium test sequentially, you know how slow this process can be. That is like going to an ATM machine and having to wait in line for hours on end, waiting for the next person in front of you to finish drawing some cash. So how can we improve this process? Or in other words, how can we make our tests run faster? One way to do this would be to have more machines available for customers to use. By having more machines available, we would be able to serve more customers in the same amount of time. It would also mean that the user experience would be greatly enhanced. Now, taking this back to Selenium, this would mean that we could execute more tests in the same amount of time. So in this example, we simply added more machines. This would be the equivalent of having more threads for our tests to use during execution. Now, if this is not done properly, here are some of the pitfalls that you may encounter. You may see things like no pointer exception, no such session exception, web driver exception, among others. Let's now see how we can avoid these. On your screen, you're seeing the key tools that we have at our disposal to be able to properly set up our tests to run them in parallel. The first one here is thread local. This is a class in Java that provides thread local variables. Next, we have thread guard. This is a class in Selenium that makes sure that the driver is only called by the thread that created it. This can save you a lot of headache when you're trying to troubleshoot your test failures. I will say that this is only available for the Java language bindings. This is optional but I highly recommend that you use this. And lastly, we use synchronized methods. Synchronized methods allow us to avoid issues when we're doing things such as writing or reading from a file. That's it for the slides. Now let's go to the code. And here I have a framework that I already created. If you would like to learn how this framework was created, you can check out the Intro to WebDriver video series or the Intermediate WebDriver video series. And the first thing that we're going to focus on is this WebDriver instance right here. This is a variable of type WebDriver. This is the same WebDriver instance that our tests use when they execute. You'll notice that this has been created static. Static means that there's only one copy of this variable. This is great if you're running your test sequentially because you're only running one test at a time, hence you only need one instance of WebDriver. However, trouble comes when you're trying to run your test in parallel. If you only have one instance of WebDriver and you have multiple threads trying to operate on that same instance, then issues arise. So what we need to do is to make WebDriver thread safe. What does that mean? It means that we need to give each thread a separate copy of the WebDriver object. So how do we do this in Java, you may ask? Well, we need to use thread local. So here I'm going to add a new keyword. I'm going to make this final here and I'm going to call thread local. Now the type is going to be WebDriver and we're going to say driver is equal to new thread local. And make sure that you understand this concept here. We're creating a thread safe variable of type WebDriver. It means that every thread will have its own copy of this variable. Next, we're going to create a method that is going to give us access to this variable. So let's go down here and let's create a new method. And we're going to say public static. This will return a WebDriver object and let's call it getDriver. Now we need to say return driver dot get. So when we call this method get driver, it is going to return us a copy of this web driver object. Great. So now we have that set up. Let's keep going. We're going to scroll down to the area where we set up the web driver. Here I have this method called open browser. This is the one that creates the new web driver instance. You'll notice here that in the case of Chrome, it does driver is equal to new Chrome driver. So we need to make a minor change to this right here. So let's remove this. And we're going to say driver dot set. Now, why are we saying driver dot set? Recall that driver in this case is a thread local variable. So by calling driver dot set, we're setting the current threads thread local variable. And inside this parentheses, I can say new Chrome driver. And you can stop right here if you want to. However, I'm going to take this a step further to show you how to use the thread guard Selenium class. So here I'm going to say thread guard. dot protect and I'm going to wrap this new web driver around that. 
Recall what I said about ThreadGuard. This is an extra Java Selenium security feature that makes sure the driver is only called by the thread that created it. And so far I showed you how to implement ThreadLocal as well as ThreadGuard, but I still haven't shown you how to use synchronized methods. Let's go take a look at that now. Let me scroll up here. You'll notice that I have this method called load properties. This loads a properties file. This one over here, config.properties. This will have information such as the browser that I want to use and the base URL. And notice that this method is using file input stream. Since this method is reading from a file, it is a great candidate for being thread safe. Because we want to avoid the scenario in which we have n number of threads all trying to access the same file at the same time. So how do we make this method thread safe? That's easy in Java. Java has a special keyword called synchronized. So here we're going to say private synchronized. By making this method synchronized, we're making sure that only one thread can access this method at any given time. There is one more thing that I want to show you, and it's in this method right here called close browser. We used to say driver that quit, and notice that this is giving us an error now. It says cannot resolve method quit in thread local. That is because driver now refers to a thread local variable. So in order to refer to the web driver, we're going to say get driver. So let's say get driver dot quit. And this is a method call. So let me add the parentheses here. And lastly, we're going to say driver dot remove. So this line right here is quitting the web driver session. If we look at this other line here, I'm going to take a look at this method right here, remove. It says that it removes the current threads value for this thread local variable. So let's go back here. If we notice up here, we created a new thread local variable. And this line down here is removing that thread local variable. And as you can see here, we still have a lot of errors. And that is because we used to call driver directly. We used to say driver dot do this, driver dot do that. But we can no longer do that. Now we have to refer to this method up here that gets the driver, this get driver method. So instead of saying driver over here dot manage, I'm going to say get driver. and call this method. Notice that the error goes away. So now we're referring to a web driver that is thread safe. And we would have to do this for all of these errors over here. For example, whenever we try to find an element, in this case over here, I would say get driver dot find element. The same thing for this one, get driver that close, get driver that navigate, and so on and so forth. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. In the next video, we're going to learn how to use testng to run our test in parallel. This video showed you some interesting Java concepts. If you enjoyed this video, check out this other video I made on the singleton design pattern. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.